All right, welcome back to the NFL Report. And JP, I am so looking forward to this because we are now joined by yeah. New Orleans Saints head coach Dennis Allen. I've known DA way back. Gosh, it's been about 15 years we go back, DA, back to Atlanta. And I, I, first off, thanks for joining us. But we, we wanted to have you on because this has been such an eventful offseason in terms of changing of your coaching staff. On, on the offensive side, you hire Clint Kubiak as your offensive coordinator. Just kind of what went into that, and what are you expecting now for your offense? Is, is it is it going to be a radical change, or just something you think fits philosophically with what you want to do with this team? Yeah, well, look, uh, obviously we went through an extensive uh, search in terms of interviewing a lot of people for – uh, this position, I think we, I think we interviewed uh, eleven or twelve offensive coordinator candidates. Mm. A lot of really qualified guys. Uh, I felt like, you know, we really needed to do a deep dive into uh, a, a lot of different schemes and a lot of different personalities. Uh, the, the, I wanted to really look at, you know, what was going to be the best fit for the New Orleans Saints for our players that we have here and the things that we need to try to get accomplished. And um, I felt like Clint Kubiak was uh, obviously the, 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 the person of choice. And, and um, I've, I've known Clint for a long time. I, I feel like I've known the family for, you know, probably over um, 20, 30 years. Uh, I remember watching Clint's dad, Gary play quarterback back at Texas A&M, uh, you know, yep. growing up. So I feel like I, I feel like I've known this family. Uh, I feel like I've, I've known uh, this scheme um, for a long time. And, and, and I feel like this is the best scheme um, that gives your players the best chance to have success that's going in the national football league right now. And, and uh, uh, I think Clint uh, is highly intelligent. Uh, he's extremely hard worker. Um, I think we've put together an outstanding uh, staff uh, with a little bit of a mixture of some older veteran coaches that have been there, done that, uh, with some uh, younger, uh, progressive mindset type of guys. And, and I think it's going to be a great mixture for our, for our organization. Yeah, before we move forward to what, what we want to talk about philosophically and scheme-wise, and you, you touched on it there a little bit. I know I've been told back in the day, you know, the way Gary, when he ran it at its highest level, it's almost unguardable at some times if it's done the right way, the way this offense can be run. But, but specifically, Clint, coming from San Francisco and the way you've seen coaches depart out of San Francisco and have success, what is it that you learned maybe in that interview process with Clint about what that building is doing right to have guys prepared to make a jump like you're having Clint do? Yeah, well, I just think it's really about, um, you know, having having a system that you believe in uh, and then being able mm -hmm. to clearly identify the players that fit that system um, and then being able to acquire the talent that fits that. And, and I think um, – I think they've done as good a job as any in San Francisco of being able to do that. I think they have a belief system of, of things that they they really firmly believe in, and they don't vary from that. Obviously, the scheme has has evolved as it's go, gone along. Um, you know, mm -hmm. this goes back to you know Mike Shanahan coaching uh, back at Denver uh, through yep. you know Coob going to uh, Houston, uh, and then. And then carrying that scheme along, you know, when he went back to uh, Baltimore and then he went to Minnesota. And you just see this scheme having a lot of success. There's probably a little bit more window dressing within the scheme now than maybe what there was, you know, 10 mm. or 15 years ago. Uh, but I just think it, it's it's a system that's quarterback friendly. Uh, and, and I think it relies on being able to run the football and, uh, and get your play action passing game going. Yeah, I love I love hearing you talk about this because you're a defensive guy, right? You've had to scheme against this, so you know how much of a challenge it is um, schematically. But you just said it. This is a quarterback-friendly system. How do you think this is going to benefit Derek Carr? Well, look, I think Derek's going to uh, do exceptionally well. I, you know, I thought there was a, a point in time this past season where um, 
you know, we started incorporating a little bit more of the play action passing game. And I really felt like that's where our offense started to take off. I thought that's where Derek really kind of started to take off. And, you know, it's interesting because, you know, I've had communication with Derek throughout this process, uh, you know, and talked to him about some of the different candidates that, you know, we were bringing in. Uh, and his brother, David, had played for Gary in, in, uh, in Houston. And that was David's last year in, in Houston. And I was kind of I was a little bit concerned that, you know, maybe that wouldn't go over that great. And, and, uh, and David had some really good things to say, you know, about the offensive scheme uh, and about how he, uh, you know, really appreciated the scheme and the things that they were doing and, and, and really enjoyed playing for, for Gary and felt like, look, if, if, if there's some similarities, which I think there's a ton between uh, Gary and Clint, that uh, it was going to be a great fit. And so, I'm really kind of excited about that. It's interesting you, you bring up Houston. I was a beat guy there when Gary was the head coach, and I remember those drafts, DA, of him kind of finding the guys that fit this scheme we're talking about throughout the draft. So I'm kind of curious, now that you make this switch on offense, what have the meetings been like, and does your draft philosophy maybe change a little bit in the style of player maybe you're looking at on the offensive line or some other spots with the way that yeah. Clint wants to run this? Yeah, no, I think that's a great question. You know, um, you know, a few years back, um, defensively here, I remember back in 2015, kind of 2016, we weren't sure exactly what we wanted to be defensively, 3-4, three, 4-3, four, four, three, Seattle 3 defense, uh, New England single high man. Um, we kind of went through a little process, and, and, and uh, it was really kind of in 16 where I – I kind of took over and uh, I think we clearly identified exactly what we wanted to do defensively uh, and exactly mm -hmm. what we were looking for in each position. And so therefore we were able to go out and find those guys 2017 draft and on. And, and I think we became a lot better defense because of that, because we clearly identified what we were looking for. Uh, and I think that's the process that we're going through uh, right now. We're, we're in the process of having our February draft meetings uh, with the scouts, uh, with Jeff Ireland, Mickey Loomis, myself, we're in there talking through these guys. Uh, and we had a chance to get the offensive coaching staff in here over the weekend uh, and really sit down with the, you know, with the scouts and, and, and with the people in the draft room and, and kind of go through, look, th this is what we're looking for at the quarterback position. This is what we're looking for in an mm -hmm. offensive tackle. This is what we're looking for at the receiver position. So, uh, I think that's been I think that's been great for our group, uh, and I think we'll we'll have to continue to have those discussions as we go throughout you know this draft process and really not just the draft process but free agency also. Mm -hmm. I mean I know that's invigorating. I mean it's got to be like so cool now to have these types of discussions with a new staff and kind of hear new ideas and and to really do this. So let, let's kind of flip it to the other side of the ball, DA. You know that's where you you just had one of the best defenses in the NFL for just the longest time. I want to look at Cam Jordan because last year seemed like just such an aberration. You know, you only had the two sacks. He wasn't putting up, you know, the typical Hall of Fame type of numbers we've seen him put up. Do you consider that just kind of a blip on the radar? You know, and what does he maybe need to do to get back to the Cam that we have seen for more than a decade? Yeah, well, look, I, I think I think the thing that I would say about Cam, you know, probably where, where the dip occurred a little bit is just his ability to finish – uh, on the quarterback. Um, I think he, they, he was still effective in kind of being able to get around the quarterback. He just didn't finish as well on the quarterback. And so uh, I think that's one of the things that we've got to continue to look at and work at. I think he's still one of the better run players in our league at the defensive end position. Uh, but look, let's be honest. I mean, as we as we all get older, we, 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 we start to slow down a little bit. I don't think he's at that point um, where I think he's still got some good football left. Um, and I think it's up to us to try to find the positions and the places to put him in uh, to allow him to still be successful, you know? And, and so, uh, look, the other thing is he, 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 he injured his ankle at some point in the season. I think yeah. it might, might have been the, the Minnesota week. And um, look, he's such a tough competitor that he just battled through and fought through it. But I think it was probably, you know, six weeks before he started feeling more like himself. 
Yeah, you mentioned you mentioned Cam's age, and, and, and I'm not pushing him out the door by any stretch. He's one of my favorite players to watch. But as a head coach now that you're in this position and, you, and you're going through this, when a roster starts to get a little bit older, how do you figure out gauging, you know, a guy still, as you mentioned, Cam still has this much left in your mind, gauging between we have to try to maybe flip this and get younger in some aspects, but we still want to value what this guy brings because you have – a lot of those type of players that still bring a lot to the table. How do you gauge that? Yeah, look, I think it's a delicate balance, you know, because um, not only do these players, I'm talking about guys like Cam Jordan, I'm talking about guys like Tyron Matthew, I'm talking about guys like Mm -hmm. Demario Davis. We're speaking specifically on the defensive side of the ball. Um, Look, they can still play, uh, and they can still Mm -hmm. play at at a winnable level. Um, and it's all those other intangibles that they can bring to your football team that don't necessarily always show up on the stat sheet, um, but they, mm-hmm. they, they show up in terms of the culture and, and, uh, and the way you go about doing things. And so, look, it's a delicate balance, and it's hard because, you know, these guys have been such great players for such a long time. Uh, that's, that's the challenging part of this business, but – uh, as long as they can play and play at a level that allows us to be able to win, uh, then then uh, I think they're valuable pieces to our team. DA, hey, one last question before we let you go here, and and this is important. I'm in New Orleans for the uh, the, the HBCU Legacy Bowl. The HBCU Combine was run at your facility, and the Saints have such a rich history with players, coaches, and supporting black college athletics even last year you guys adding mark evans the offensive lineman out of arkansas pine bluff just what about your organizational commitment to continue to find talent on and off the field to make you guys better year in and year out yeah well look i mean i think i think it's really just a commitment to trying to find uh the best people and the best players that we can find regardless of where they come from uh and i think this uh you know this legacy bowl and we had the 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 combine over here at the facility yesterday where i think there was probably about you know 50 kids that got an opportunity to get in front of the nfl scouts uh and and go through some uh, you know positional uh drills or, or skill drills um to get get their get their name and get their face in front of uh some nfl evaluators and give them an opportunity to maybe have a a, a chance to uh you know, either be drafted or signed as a free agent. Um, you know, we look. Football players come in in, in all shapes, sizes, and, and areas, and backgrounds, and all those kinds of things. And and uh, you know, we're willing to look anywhere we can to find somebody that fits our culture, that fits our program, uh, that can help us. You know, be a successful organization, win some football games. Hey, Da man, we appreciate. The support. We appreciate you taking yeah. the time with us, man. You're the best. Thank you so much. Good luck. You know, and you taking out time when the middle of draft prep and putting the staff together means the world. So can't thank you enough for joining yes. James and I here thank at you. the NFL Report. Yeah, absolutely, guys. I always got I always got 15 minutes for you guys. There we go. We're gonna, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna follow you back. We're gonna hold you to that, DA. 